In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up your Ugreen NAS. I'm using the DXP2800, but this will work with any Ugreen NAS device. I'm also going to show you what you need to do to make sure you get the fastest transfer speeds possible. The NAS was provided by Ugreen, but I'm not being paid to make this video and all thoughts and comments are my own. First of all, let's unbox it. Once you've opened the box, you'll find a box containing accessories, a manual, and the NAS itself. Now let's have a look and see what's in the box of accessories. You get a screwdriver, an ethernet cable, power brick, the locking keys for your hard drive, and the plug. The manual sleeve includes warranty information and the manual itself. Now let's have a look at the NAS itself. On the front, you get a USB-C port, and a standard USB. You have two drive bays, which are easy to pull in and out. On the back, you have a dust cover, HDMI port, three USB ports, a power input, a reset button, and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Inside the bay doors, there's space for two M.2 drives. Before you install them, make sure you remove the blue cellophane from a the thermal pad. You can then place the M.2 drive in at an angle, push it firmly down and close the hatch. Installing the hard drives is really simple. On the cage, there's a little button, press it to open the side. Place the hard drive into the bay, close the hatch. You should hear it click into place. You can then take the hard drive and insert it into the NAS. Push the lever to click it into position and you're done. Now the hard drives are installed, connect power and connect the Ethernet port to your network switch. You're now ready to power the NAS on. Now let's look at setting up the NAS. First of all, go to your web browser and type find.ugnas.com. As long as it's been connected properly, this screen should appear. Press connect. You can then choose to name the NAS. I'm going to just call mine NAS. Accept the user agreement and press next. You now need to give it an account name and a password. You can then choose to bind your email address Doing this will allow you to remotely view your NAS from outside. This is optional, but I'm going to do it as it's a really useful feature. You then need to choose your system update method. I'm going to use the recommended settings, but it's up to you what you do. The NAS will now initialize and check for any updates. This may take a while. After a while, you'll see a welcome screen. I'm going to press start. It will give you a quick overview of the different buttons and options. Once you've viewed them, it will ask you to get started with volume creation. This is setting up your hard drives. So I'm going to press next and create. First of all, I'm going to select my two main hard drives. You can then choose your different options. So RAID 0 will give me 7.2 terabytes of storage. However, if one of the hard drives breaks, I lose my data. With RAID 1, the data is stored on both hard drives. So if one drive gets damaged, I'm still backed up. So this is the option I'm going to select. 
press next. I choose a file system. I'm going to choose BT RFS. Again, this is up to you what you choose. I'm going to make sure the total amount of storage is assigned. Press next. So that's the first storage pool. Then press create. If there's data on the hard drives already, it will be deleted. So you need to be aware of this. Make sure any data is backed up before you press format. And enter the password for your account. Press confirm. You will now create your storage pool. This may take a while to do. Whilst the storage pool is syncing, let's set up our SSD. So click on hard drive. Select the M.2 hard drive. So press the three dots and press use. You can choose to create a storage pool or an SSD cache. The SSD cache should improve transfer speeds. So this is what I'm going to do. Link it to storage pool one and press next. So I'm linking to volume one and cache mode is read only. So this should make reading data from a NAS faster and press next. I'm going to allocate all the capacity. So 223.2, press next and press apply. And choose to format the hard disk. Put the password in again, press confirm. And you're done. Whilst the storage pool is syncing, you'll need to set up some folders. So go to files, click on personal folder, and press enable. Choose a storage location, so mine's volume one. Choose who it's for, so it's for me, and press OK. You will also want to create some shared folders. So go to files, select shared folder, and press plus. You can then give a new folder a name. So I'm gonna call mine YouTube Tutorials. Press create. Okay. The next thing you want to do is make sure you can view the folders directly from your Mac. So go to control panel and select file service. You then need to select enable SMB service. Choose a name for work group. I'm gonna call mine NAS server. Press apply. You should now minimize the screen. And go to finder. Press go and select connect to server. If you then press browse, you should see the NAS drive in the network folder. So select that. Press connect as. You then need to enter the username and password you made when you created the NAS. As you can see, my personal folder and my shared folders are now visible. I'm now gonna select my YouTube tutorial folder. I'm gonna move one of the video files I'm using for this video over into the folder. And as you can see, it's transferring really fast. If I now go back to the web browser, and select files, go back to the shared folder and select my tutorial folder, you can see the file I just moved is now visible. Now let's look at getting the most speed possible out of your NAS. When I first set up the NAS, I connected it to my Eero router, but then wirelessly to the PC. I found I was getting really slow speeds. So let's run a speed test to see what I get. As you can see, I'm getting about 10 megabytes a second write speed, and the read speeds are about the same. This wasn't gonna be fast enough for doing video editing directly from a NAS. To fix this, you need to make sure your computer and NAS are both connected to the same network switch. Ideally at 2.5 gigahertz, as this will be fastest. Now I've done that, I select my target drive. So YouTube tutorials, press open, run the speed test again. You can see I'm now getting 258 right and a similar speed on my read. This speed will enable me to edit in real time directly from the NAS. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please make sure you like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.